All right, guys, we're back again with another adventure today. Today, I'm going to be talking about DNS records for Pi Hole, basically. So it's pretty cool. So if you don't want Pi Hole to handle all your stuff, like you can still be able to gauge of what IP address devices are being blocked and uh, who's not being blocked and everything like that through DNS records. So DNS basically is what the computer uses to look up information and stuff like that. So let's say you go to a web page, www.google.com. Well, there's different DNSs out there. There's Cloudflare, there's Google, and those have a lookup thing. So they know where to send you basically. Some have faster speeds than others and some don't. So those basically take, because basically an IP address it almost has a different Kamagawa IP address, like Google has all this stuff, but we know it as google.com. So what DNS does, it's put a name to those addresses so us people that don't have brains that can explode can understand, oh, google.com, not dot da 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 dot four four dot three, whatever. We can just know just to go to google.com. But we can do this on our pie hole too, so let's get into it. <laughs> So first of all, as you can see, I've already done this on this network. This is my mother and father-in-law's pie hole right here. So if we go to the query log, we can see all the stuff they've kind of been blocked and everything. And I can see Keith's iPhone, the Nvidia Shield and stuff, and these other IP addresses that if I look on the network, I can find and I can put names to these things. So this is 192.168.4.2. So if I go to their network on my phone, and I think that is this, that's 2.2. .2. Oh, that's me right now, because I've logged in right now. Yes, that is for, nope, that's, wait, the laptop. Where's my laptop? There it is. Yep, 4.2, that is me. So, because I'm using the VPN in, so that's me, my computer. But I would like to know that, or if, I would like to know what things are being blocked, and I could have names for it, or I could even access the, the device itself through instead of the IP address, I can name it whatever I want. I could be like, hey, I need to go to my cloud. Instead of 192.168, I'm just gonna put in cloud.com or cloud.co. So if I go to local DNS records, as you can see here, I've already pre-done these, as in is Keith's phone. So now when I go to DNS records, because I have a static IP for his phone on the router, I can set this here because I know it won't change. So now I can say, hey, I want this IP address of 192.168.1.135. I want, instead of showing the address of being blocked, I want you just to say Keith's phone. So I just know, boom, it's the phone. I don't have to go back and say, oh, what's that address again? I just know, oh, it's the phone. Uh, here's their cloud right here. There's their Chromecast. Here's the Nvidia Shield. Here's my mother-in-law's phone, and here's their TV, and the TV is for their HD home run. So if I go to 192.168.103, hit enter. Oops, wait, is that it? Oh uh, yeah, okay, it was, oops. 192.168.1.103. There you go, boom. HD home run, baby, right there. This is their HD home run, but what else I can do Instead of doing that address, I can just be like this. New page, tv.com, boom. And it might take there, boom, right there, tv.com, because I named it tv.com. It can be tv.co, but for them, make it easy. Just tv.com, that's all you gotta put. That's, I mean, most people aren't used to putting co, they're used to putting com, so you could do that for a business. You might not want com, you might want co. So it just depends on what you wanna do, both will work. So yeah, here's another one, cloud. Like I said, instead of having to go 192.168.1.100, there it is. Or I could just go to <gasps> cloud.com, whoops, com, enter and take me there, baby. There it is, right there. It's right there, it just works. It's so cool for remembering, especially families. And here's the cool thing. Like I say, let's say that you map a drive or something like that. If you have a pie hole, 
I would do it to the router too if your router can do it. So if your router's cool and can do DNS records too, then definitely map your drives by both. Because let's say you go to map a drive. I don't know if you guys ever mapped the drive. So if we go to map drive, we're gonna go here. I'm gonna go to desktop. Actually, we'll not desktop. We'll go to this PC. We're gonna go view and we're gonna go, uh, not there. We're gonna go to map drive, map drive. So I could, since I'm on this network right now, go. There you go, there you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know, my fingers are acting weird from it there, but there you go. So cloud.com, go down there, family, movies, and I can map this drive as cloud.com. So here's the cool thing. As long as your router has it, because in case you have another pie hole, double pie holes, you can have that. Or in case your pie hole doesn't work, and like I said before in other videos, you can have converted your network or VLAN to use Cloudflare, but your router handles it and your router has cloud to that same address, like right here. So your router would have, let's see here. The router would have the same address. The router is DNS records too. It'd say cloud.com and then that address. Everybody would connect. And if let's say you upgrade your network and you're like, hey, we're gonna use IP6 or I'm gonna use a different uh, IP address range. Well, guess what? All you'd have to do is change this and keep it cloud.com and everybody's just gonna reconnect again. And the reason why I say make sure your router has it because if your pie hole has it this way and then your pie hole goes down and it uses your router and your router doesn't have I, you know, cloud.com to that address and your map drive uses cloud.com instead of the IP address, then there'll be problems. That's why I say do both if you can. Uh, and you should have both anyways. I mean, I don't have to have a pie hole, but I mean like, if you're gonna do pie hole, you better do both on it. So the router and that, so that's what I'm saying. But yeah, it's so freaking cool. We got uh, the Nvidia Shield. Now we can go to query logs, we can go here. So now if I go to dashboard again, we go to top devices, you can see right there, the Nvidia Shield, 1,000. 414 my mother-in-law's phone iphone 5575 blocks <laughs> crazy uh, and stuff so it's kind of just it's just so freaking cool that you can kind of just see all the different blocks going on and put names to them instead of just ip addresses so that's why i always say it's cool to have static ip addresses now i know in ivp6 uh, you don't really have to worry about static ip addresses and stuff like that but you can if you want but there's so much different stuff but this is for ivp4 but hey if you guys like these videos like subscribe and hit the bell notification so you guys don't miss any of these videos i know this is kind of long and well not long but kind of short but kind of there's a lot of things to go over but yeah it's just it's really straightforward like i said again you go to local dns records Add a new one here. You would just be like, let's say dog. Dog.co. You put the IP address associated with it and then hit add and boom, Bob's your uncle. You might have to, you're gonna have to refresh your page though, your browser. So the first time, you clear your catch and your history and then you should be fine. And then it should just be loading like regular. So hey, you guys know I make these videos for you guys. I hope you and your family are having a rock and rolling day. Peace out and I'll catch you in the next one.